Hey, welcome to another edition of, oh my gosh, Alvin, get that out of your mouth. You can have that. Sorry, my dog, <laughs> I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I like to give him the crust and he, and, and I had it in the paper towel and he, he grabbed the paper towel. I'm sorry, honey. Anyway, welcome to Wrestling History. This episode is going to be September 1993. It's got a picture of Flair and Fifi on the cover of the magazine. Oh my gosh. When I started thinking about September 93, let me just tell you. This was back when we would tape down at um, Disney or in Orlando or whatever, like four months at a time. Craziness happened. They were going to give Sid Vicious the belt, but he stabbed Arn Anderson in England in November. And so... They couldn't give him, you know, that all got squashed and all got crazy. And he was going to get, he was going to get the world belt, but you can't go around stabbing people. You know, I don't know what the whole deal was. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. So I don't know. I managed the nasty boys at fall brawl. And, um, at ECW, Eddie Gilbert walked out. He was booking. And he walked out, and he was replaced by Paul Lee. And we all know what happened with that. Then ECW became famous. Paul Lee bought the company. But Eddie walked out, and then he was told that he was being replaced by Kevin Sullivan, and you could have heard a pin drop. Eddie totally freaked out. His brother took a baseball bat and broke a bunch of tables in the back because he wanted to do a farewell speech or farewell farewell match so Todd let him do it which he shouldn't have done it because Eddie gets on the microphone and and just made it all about him and then Doug beating up the tables with the baseball bat so maybe that's why there were no tables or chairs out there Doug that idiot did that stuff so and then WWE at the time was building everything up for Lex Luger and they were building him up against the Patriot building him up for six months and then it fizzled out and Lex didn't all that work that they put into nothing he didn't get over and it fizzled out and nothing happened. And at the time, they started working with Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And at the time, Smoky Mountain Wrestling TV was getting higher ratings in some places than WCW. Um, Cornette was awesome. And his Smoky Mountain, and I think he was managing Vader or somebody. I, I don't remember. I can't remember, but all I know is Smoky Mountain was awesome. I wish I could have worked there. And Alvin, get away from the tissue. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Let's go through the magazine. First off, oh my gosh, let me tell you the story about Jake Roberts and how I met. All right, there was this girl in Atlanta who was a ring rat. And not, not that, I mean, I was a ring rat, so I'm not saying anything bad or anything like that, but I'm not going to mention her name because. She said a lot of stuff to a, a boyfriend of mine trying to break us up. And she had a great hand in breaking me and somebody else up. So I don't want to give her any credit for it. Anyway, I was there visiting her. And we were sitting in the back at the Omni. This is when the Omni was there. And there was an area where, like, girlfriends and wives and friends could sit. So we were sitting in the little booth area. Jake comes out. And I was like, oh, my God, who is that? I want to meet him. She's like, oh, that's Jake Roberts. I'll introduce you to him. So at the end at the end of the show, she walked up to him and introduced him. And he asked, hey, where are you ladies going? And I forget where we said we were going, but we were going someplace. And we went out. And that's how we met. We didn't met because I was married to somebody. He went through this whole cockamamie story about how Ole Anderson told him to hit me up or I don't know what he was saying. I I have no clue. You know. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to get a good angle. <laughs> I just got out of the shower. Anyway, so he was trying to make up some cockamamie story. I don't know what the story's all about. So that's it. And we started going out. And then he dumped me for his wife Cheryl. He met Cheryl at Shenanigans. And I call shenanigans on it. <laughs> and he dumped me. And that's it. And he married her. Thank God he married her, not me. Because I wouldn't want to have about eight kids with him. Because he doesn't pay child support. And he's a deadbeat dad. So, so glad that I dodged that bullet right there. That was a bullet dodger. Anyway, let's look through here. Let's see what they got. If there's anything interesting in here... Let's see. I don't see nothing. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, Missy's View. I totally forgot about this. Missy's View, and I'm sitting there having dinner with Rod Brendamore in Atlantic City. What does it say? I don't have my glasses on, but I don't, I, I, I can't believe this. Yeah, Rod Brendamore says, I have two words for you, Rod Brendamore. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's the only thing interesting in this magazine. Pictures of me, of course. And there's 10 questions for Colonel Parker. And Dustin Rhodes and Max Payne. And let's see what else is in here. Oh, Steve Austin and the Hollywood Blondes. Oh my gosh, it's a it's a it's a um pull out. That's cool. It's a pull out um poster of them. They were such a great tag team. It's such a shame they didn't let them do what they wanted to do. Then it has Sting and Davy Boy Smith and styling and profiling with Flair and Fifi. Slambury 93. Some stuff about that. And that's really about it. So that's my story. That's my story for September 93. I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. Mwah.